I'm back in the kitchen. Today I'm going to make some tuna noodle casserole. Um, I've actually never made this in my life so I thought it would be nice that we could kind of do it together and you know learn a little something. Um, I'm actually on this group it's called Luffy Homestyle Cooking and Baking. It's on Facebook and there was someone on there last night looking for tuna casserole and I <laughs> I had been to Costco and bought this giant can of Alcabor tuna. This is a regular size can, so you can see how big. So I thought it might be fun just to kind of open it up and see how it looks. I think it was like, I don't know, five bucks or something like that. Pretty cool. So anyway, let's go ahead and open this tuna and see how it looks. It's actually Alcabor. Alcabor is a little different than regular tuna. Like you can get skipjack, flat flaked white, uh, chunk white, whatever. Um, but Alcabor is actually really white, white, and it's like a higher quality tuna. I remember the first time I had it, I was actually driving to Cornerbrook with a, an old friend of mine, Gail. Um, we were going over there to do a class or a show or I can't even remember really. And she goes, so to save us some time, she said, I made up these tuna sandwiches. She said, it's Alcabor tuna. It's, you know, it's a little better than others. Anyway, she passes over this sandwich, which is delicious white 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 chunky tuna on homemade bread and i thought it was the best sandwich i had eaten in my entire life so like hooked after that <laughs> mm, it's pretty delicious it really really is yeah <laughs> don't worry i thought about draining the can <laughs> so this is a little bit exciting there we go. I'm just going to. I'm actually going to turn down. I've got some stuff started already just to save some time. Turn that down a little bit. So, sure, look, the cover of the can is as big as my face. Ooh, it looks really good. Oh, hold on. I don't know if you guys can. I'll try and see if you can see that without spilling it all over my floor. Anyway, it looks pretty interesting. There's a bit of liquid. It's packed in water, which I like. Wow. I've never seen anything like this in my life. <sighs> Look at the chunks. Seriously. Like, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. <sighs> so, I'm just going to set that liquid aside. And I know I'm not going to use all the tuna in this recipe, but... Um, I guess I'll be eating sandwiches for months. <laughs> Anyhow, um, yeah, so the recipe calls for two cans like this, or I believe it's 10 ounces. So just let me check. I've got everything just written down on paper. Um, two, 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 two. Yeah, 10 ounces of tuna. So I got my handy dandy scale here ready to go. Ooh, that little burner is quite hot. I have just had one of them little plug-in ones down the basement. I'm like, hmm, maybe that'll work. I've got it on one and it's frying away. So we need 10 ounces. And then we're going to flake that a little bit. So I bet you yeah, you could just pick out like, like, look, amazing. And some more. <laughs> I wonder what kind of like how big this fish must have been huge. My husband caught a tuna one time. We were down Dominican um, and a Maui Maui or something like that. Oh, pretty interesting. That's too much. I'm going to have to take some out. And there, that's like, this is like 10.1 ounces. I'm gonna go there, like a little extra fish and stuff in mine. So, I'm just gonna lay that there. And, oh, I better be careful not to burn my onions and stuff. There we go. She got to turn that right off for a minute. Now, so it said to shred the cheese and set it aside. I've got that done. Um, and then cook the noodles. Egg noodles it called for. I actually took, there was a bunch of comments in the section and then I had looked up a bunch of recipes. So I said, well, 
maybe what I'll do is just combine them all together. So, um, yeah, I had these no yolk egg noodles. Um, I've got them cooked and ready to go. It called for three cups dry. Um, once I got them cooked, it actually looked like mm, maybe it might not be enough. So I've got some other dry noodles out there just in case. So we'll see how it goes. Um, then we are going to, so we added the chicken bouillon to the water when it was boiling. It called for two cubes. I don't have cubes. I just put a couple spoonfuls of this in there. Basically, it's just to flavor the noodles. Like, so whatever you have on hand, really. Um, the cheese was three cups of white cheddar cheese. I had about two cups of white, and so the rest I threw in marble. Whatever you have in hand, just, you know. And so then it called for a stock of celery, a half of a white onion. I don't know why any recipe called for half a white onion. I just chopped up the small one, put the whole thing in there, and two cloves of garlic. I just went out in the garden and grabbed a couple of cloves, and that was fine. Um, before I move on with this, I got something to show you guys. Um, this giant celery, you can actually see how big it is. This was a stump of a celery that I had used. And then I just, you know, I, I cut the completely, all the stalks off. I put the bottom in some water till I had a little root, put it in soil, and <laughs> we've got celery now for a long time. So yeah, so that was good. And now our next step is, so over low heat, we had, so we fried up the butter, the onions, the garlic and the celery. I added a little salt and a little pinch of celery salt just for flavor. Um, the garlic goes in at the last minute just so you don't burn it. I might have actually even overcooked just a little bit. Um, and that was because of this burner. I'm not used to it. So, uh, I guess just translucent. I'm sure it's going to taste delicious anyway. Um, yeah, so we've got that done, rendered down. And we've got to add our milk and cream and soup. It calls for a can of cream of mushroom soup and one and a half cups of evaporated milk. I don't have evaporated milk. We just use fresh most times around here. So what I'm going to do is add a can of cream of mushroom soup and then an additional can. I'll just put in a measuring cup and then measure it up to the one and a half. It should work out fine. Again, I'm all about substitutions. And when I was looking for the soup, I always, always, always use Elmer's cream of mushroom soup. Like the difference is amazing when you open the can. It just looks like fresh cream, the perfect cubes of mushroom, everything. So um, what I thought I'd do would be to, I couldn't get the Elmer, of course, so I got in our compliments and the camels, and we'll see the difference in the two of those and see. At first glance, they look pretty similar. Similar. So to that pan, we're going to add our soup. Let's go. So I hope my, I didn't burn my onions too bad. They're not black, so I can't believe how hot that still is. It's amazing. Could be the frying pan too. It's stainless steel and it's got like a double bottom on it. So I'm thinking that could be um, holding the heat a little extra time. Now, one and a half. So, this is the our compliments. So we'll pop that in there. And yeah, it does look a little different. Again, both of those are, they're nice, but they're not Elmer's. And I don't know, I've tried three or four stores, so I really don't know what's going on there with that. So, we need one and a half cups. So, we're just going to add some cream to bring it up to the half cup. Just mix that around. Yeah, and we're gonna add that right to the pan again. I don't think my pan is gonna be big enough. Um, that was a hindsight. Um, I do have another pan there just in case. Yeah, actually the, uh, our compliments brand looks very nice. It's really white looking, which is really good. So we're just going to stir that soup and cream in with the onions, 
celery and garlic. Oh, turn it back on, I guess. Nice. We're going to calls to flake the tuna. Yeah, we'll just flake it up and see. I'm actually going to put it in a bigger bowl. I'm having a hard time in this little bowl. So, here we go. And just, yeah, just give it with a fork. This tuna is so nice. Just look, you can just pick up the big flakes in it. Beautiful. I actually go through quite a bit of tuna in this house because when we're not eating any sandwiches and stuff, we actually put it on top of our dog's food. It keeps their coats really nice and shiny. Um, it gives them some omegas and some, I don't know. It's just really good for their health. Good for everybody's health. Good for your brain. Yeah. And you'll notice the Alcabor tuna is a little drier. Kind of like, you know, when you get white chicken and dark chicken. The, the dark chicken is really nice and moist and then the light chicken isn't, but... I prefer the light, always. So yeah, so I got that pretty flaked up. You don't want to have too big of a chunk in there because again, tuna by itself like this is kind of dry. So I'm going to add that to the pan as well. Now that I'm looking at, at all this, I'm wondering, yeah, maybe I do have enough noodles. So. Well, we'll soon find out anyway. So we're going to stir that in. It's kind of nice and thick. It's my first time doing the cooking on, on right on the video. I usually just bring it over to the stove, cook it, and then you guys see it after. But eh? <gasps> we're all learning together. Yeah, so we got the tuna, the salt, pepper, the soup, the milk, sour cream. It called for a half a cup of sour cream, which I have right here. So that's going to go in the frying pan too. I would imagine that's going to give it a really nice flavor. Burner. Those burners are pretty good. I've got it on one and it's like bubbling. Crazy. We actually only bought this for like cooking outside like mussels and anything, you know, you don't want a lot of uh, smells left in the house, especially if you have company or I got a sister, she's like, oh, what are you cooking today? It just stinks. <laughs> and I'm like, that smells delicious. <laughs> and it also calls for, so the cheese, the cheese is actually going to go right in here too. I think I'm going to have enough for everything in the pan except for the noodles. Well, let's see. So this was three cups of cheese grated ahead of time. I think it's going to be really yummy. Let's hope so anyway. I hate wasting food. My dad cooked a lot growing up. My mom didn't cook a whole lot. Like she did cook, but I guess uh, I didn't say this on camera. Mom, dad was the better cook. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder if she might have done that just as an excuse so she didn't have to cook. I think my husband does that sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, I'm actually going to transfer over to another pan because I have to add the noodles and peas and it's just going to make a mess. So, bear with me. I got my little dog under the table. I could just hear her like scooping up all the mess. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna put it all into another pan. I would have done it earlier, but I find with these stainless steel pans, when you're cooking up like onions and garlic and celery and stuff, you get this little bit of brown stuff on the pan. And like that to me is all the flavor. So I like to add everything in there and scrape that up off the bottom of the pan and get all that deliciousness right in there. 
So, here we go. I don't know if you guys can, probably can't see that, how that looks right now. There we go. I'll move this over a little bit, actually. Try and be safe. Safety is number one priority. <laughs> got the cheese in there now we're going to add some peas um one recipe called for peas the other recipe called for corn so i'm like yeah what the heck why not add both so just a cup of frozen peas some corn i'm not going to put the whole can of corn in there i don't think that's necessary my goodness that that little burner is good And this is looking really nice, actually. The green actually adds a bit of color. The recipe said, too, you could also add, like, broccoli or anything like that. Um, and then we're going to use the cooked egg noodles. Um, I probably showed you. This is all I could find was these no yolks. There was actually another brand of egg noodles there, but they didn't look like very good quality, so... I'm all about quality over quantity. <laughs> so anyhow, we've got them cooked. I didn't cook them for the full amount of time, just 10 minutes because noodles are gonna cook in the oven afterwards. So this was three cups dry. They're all stuck together now where I had them sitting for a minute. <laughs> I'm actually thinking we are going to have enough noodles. I, I took out some other ones just in case, but you know, this is looking really, really good, actually. It's really cheesy, which I love. Who doesn't like cheese, right? So, yeah, look, that's how it's looking so far. And so then it says to combine the cup of crackers, which I have here. So the cup of crackers all crushed up. Combine them with two tablespoons of melted butter. Just put them over the top and then yeah, just, just use your fingers. Crunch them up a little bit. These are gonna go on the top with just a little bit of Parmesan. I put those aside. I'm gonna grab my dish. Look at that going again already. It's only on one, that's amazing. good products because they certainly don't make things like they used to anyway years ago oh my god you'd have a tv or something it'd last you forever now you're lucky to get like a year or two um it calls for a grease pan i'm just going to lightly a little bit of pan good um it called for a 9 by 13 too i think this is a little smaller um i actually buy all these things and i like to make them uh spray them and then um, put them in the freezer if there's any extra. I won't even cook it, like I won't put it in the oven. I'll just pop that right in the freezer and then, you know, someday when you're not in the mood for making supper, yeah, it's ready to go. So yeah, I'm just going to pour some of this. This is really heavy too. It looks really yummy. And it smells good, like it doesn't smell fishy or anything like that. clean up some of this mess after that's for sure and it's actually oops <laughs> good thing that was in the open can of tuna and a good thing my foot wasn't underneath there so yeah this one's really really old one but they're perfect you can put them in the freezer and throw them right in the oven you know once they sit for a few minutes so yay one for me and one for hubby for another day 
And yeah, I'm just going to scrape the rest of that in here. There we go. Smooth it out a little bit. It really, really does smell really good. Um, it also called for a little more, uh, I think it was a half a teaspoon of celery salt, half teaspoon of pepper, and a half teaspoon of regular salt. Um, I've got them already mixed up here, so I'm just going to um, sprinkle a little bit on top. I did put a little in while they were frying. And you can certainly add this right to the pan while it is, you know, while you got the noodles and the sauce and the, everything else in there. A little sprinkle of love. <laughs> it always makes it taste better. So yeah, so that's that done. Now what we gotta do is just put our cracker crumbs on. And we're just gonna sprinkle those over the top. And I just use whatever I had in the cupboard, like I think they were toppables or something similar to that. And the butter melted with the crumbs actually gives it a really nice crunch and a nice brown on the top. And it also calls for, I think it was a third a cup of Parmesan for the top. I, I think I got about a third a cup of Parmesan in this bag. so. We're just going to go ahead and use what's in here. And just a little sprinkle. My goodness, it really looks good and it was pretty easy, I got to say. Something different, my goodness. It's always the same old stuff all the time, you know. It's nice to mix it up every now and again. So, we've got that on. That, my friends, it's... That's it. It's ready to go in. These two I will wrap with plastic after I wipe the corners off and put them in the freezer. This is going to go in 400 degrees for probably, I don't know, 20 minutes until it's bubbling in the center or, you know, a good trick I was taught years ago was to um, just stick a butter knife down in the center and then take it out and put the knife like on your wrist <laughs> and you'll know if it's hot or not, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do with these. Um, the other thing was, somebody had a request. I had made the chai blossom vinegar, and I did do a uh, follow-up video on that. Well, then I asked, had somebody else asked today, how long did I leave the chai blossom in there for? And actually, it's still in there, so I thought I could just kind of drain it off for you guys so you can see it. Yeah, I'm just going to wipe my hands off in my apron because, again, I didn't bring a towel. Used to lick my fingers, that's what that is. Anyhow, so yeah, I just got a little jar here. Right. God, we got lots on the table today. And take that. Oh my God, the smell from the vinegar is amazing. Like, it's just got this light oniony kind of a flavor. And yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna pour that out. Just like that. And actually, there's still some color in here. I think I can even um, go out the garden, get a few more flowers, pop them in there, put some more vinegar in there. And yeah, because who doesn't want that? I actually had some on a salad the other day and it was absolutely, delicious like really really good so look oh <laughs> so how pretty is that like it's so nice and pink and tastes and smells really really good and i mean vinegar keeps on the shelf forever so yeah that's it my friends i guess what i will do is put in the comments the recipe i'll type it up better than what i have wrote down on these sheets um yeah, and maybe when it's done, it won't be for a few hours, I will certainly take a picture and I will let you know how it tastes. But I can already tell that it's going to be really, really good. And I might even go in the garden when I get those chives, I might chop up a few more and just sprinkle them on the top for a little garnish when it's all done. 
So that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned it. I uh, <laughs> learned something. I certainly learned something because this is my first time making tuna casserole. And I learned that these, Salton is the brand name on that little burner thing I have there. They're super hot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'll use that again. So yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day. If you got any questions or if you want something else seen or whatever put it in the comments if i can help you i'll help you okay have a good day bye